Hey everybody, Cynical Buddha here. Uh, I figured I would do a short video. Um, I've been watching some stuff um, from a couple other young collectors that have been doing some great videos and um, people showing off their collections. And for those that don't know, I, my, my primary collecting focus is Brewers and specifically Robin Yao. Like he's been my favorite player since I was a kid. I got to watch him play baseball um, in the stands. And so, uh, I've been collecting him since the mid '80s, since I kind of really started collecting baseball cards. Um, and uh, somebody had posed a question, you know, like Robin was uh, pretty prominent in the. He played to '93, but had cards into '94 because some of the sets he was still included in. Um, but right in the middle of the junk wax era, you know, like everything was super overproduced. And so the question came up, it's like, well, does he have any really rare cards? And I'm like, kind of. Um, there is like a, like the mythical unicorn card of his like 1980 Pepsi promo um, that was produced as a prototype for Pepsi. And Pepsi didn't uh, decide to go with the promotion. And so um, legend goes that MSA, who helped produce the cards with Tops, um, three sheets were created for the whole set. Um, and so obviously it was only like a 22 card set. Um, and two of the sheets were destroyed. One of the other sheets was sent back to somebody like MSA or something, and they had them professionally cut. And so they made it out into the marketplace eventually. Um, and so they figured since it was one full sheet of cards at 22 cards, uh, per set, there were probably six of each card in that set out there. And I think one, I, I posted this on my Yount blog, but one had been graded and sold for like $2,500 at some premier auction. But so that's kind of like the unicorn, but um, you, you aren't just going to find that. You can never, you, you never have been able to find it out in the wild in 1980. Uh, all of these cards you could, um, you could have somehow gotten a hold of them. Um, and they have different rarities, obviously. Um, and these are the ones that are in my collection, kind of the, the rarest mm -hmm. of. Uh, the junk wax and produce stuff. I mean, obviously, his modern stuff, he's got, like, the manufactured rarity stuff, like the one-on-ones and the, you know, the parallels number to 25 or whatever. But um, these four are probably the... the. I wouldn't say they're hard to find. You can find them, but they're, they are... Uh, uh, it would definitely take a little tracking. Like, I think most of these um, would be available on, like, check out my cards, or you could definitely find them on eBay. Um but so we'll start um, at the start of kind of the start of serial numbering was the, the Donruss Elite. Oh, this is the Legend series, but the Donruss Elite and the Legend series, um, you know, like right at the start of the insert uh, craze. This is from 92 Donruss. Um, and this is Robin's uh, Legend, obviously, and it's numbered to 10,000. Um, let's see if I'm still in focus here. Yeah. Anyways, um, it's a beautiful card. Uh, I'm pretty sure I got this off of eBay um, back in the day, but um, he doesn't have an elite. Um, this is just kind of the one insert he did, and obviously this is like right at the end. We're getting close to the end of his playing career, um, but it's a great. I mean, it's a great set too. Plus, the, you know, like uh, one of the these are the first. Uh, I think uh, I'm trying to remember when the the first elite set came out, but. Uh, highly sought after, and I mean, being numbered to ten thousand, you think, oh well, that's they're they must be cheap, and there must be a lot of them. But no, they're not. <laughs> you know, they made millions of Donner's cards uh, for that set, so these are kind of hard to find inserted. Um, but that also kind of starts leading into the rise of the insert sets too. A um, lot of the stuff in the junk wax era, like uh, you had a lot of subsets numbered into flagship sets, but not like standalone inserts. Um, one a lot of people probably know about is the Desert Shield set. Um, you know, the, the nine, so these were sent over to troops or were supposed to be sent over to troops, um, over in Kuwait back in 91. Um, you know, the story goes, a lot of these got intercepted. Some stuff made it over there, but you know, they didn't ship collecting supplies and stuff over to the troops. So, uh, anything that made it over there and made it back was probably pretty beat up. Uh, mine has got a little issue, got a few issues before anybody, you know, rags on me for having it in a screw down. It is one of the recessed with the corner. Um, but you got to watch out for fakes. I don't think anybody's faking the Robin Yount one. 
Um, but the Chipper Jones rookie and the Ken Griffey Jr. in the set are probably... Oh, the, the Chipper Jones rookie is the big the big money card for the set, obviously. But um, it's one of the harder ones to find. I think they estimated that there were 6,500 to 7,000 total sets produced. Although it came in pack form. And you can't tell the packs apart. Like, there's nothing on the box or the packs that denote that it's uh, Desert Shield. So uh, I think you have to know what case it came from. But this is, you know, um, there's, these aren't hard that hard to find, honestly. But, it can be, I mean, it can be a little harder to track down or find in good shape. So that's kind of, um, it's number two on my list. Number three, um, this is the 1990 version of this. This is the, the Career Batting Leaders card. These came out of uh, Kmart 100-pack blister packs. These were the exclusive insert with those. And uh, this is the 1990 version. You can see it right there. You can tell by the green color. Uh, they also did it in 1989, and those cards are red. Um, same design, and they used a lot of the same photos. So Robin's card is exactly the same, except it's got a red border for the 89 set. And the 1990 set has this green border. I pulled this out of a, a 50 cent box at Don's Sport Cards here. It's got some pretty bad damage on the bottom. But uh, for 50 cents, I mean, these are hard to find. <laughs> like, I don't even, I haven't even seen one of these on check out my cards in a while, but, um, these will go for 10 to 15 bucks sometimes. Sometimes you get lucky and get them a little bit cheaper, like, you know, finding in a 50 cent box, because people don't know what they are, don't know what they're worth. Um, and that's got, it's got a great checklist as well, so lots of great Hall of Famers and stars of the day. But by far the rarest card I have in my collection is this 1990 score McDonald's, uh, card. And so, I think these came in little, like, three-card solo packs or five-card solo packs, but they were only available in, like, four McDonald's in northern Idaho <laughs> for, like, a, a week or two weeks. I mean, it's something kind of insane. And these aren't hard to find either. I mean, they're, they're findable, um, but you're probably going to pay um, maybe 20 bucks for it. Maybe, I think there's one, I looked on eBay, I think there's one for nineteen ninety nine. buy it now. Um, there's one on, check out my cards right now for way too much money, but the... The seller is one of those guys who just overprices the stuff anyway, so. But it's a it's a really pretty card. I like the total design. Um, let's see the back. It kind of it kind of almost has the '90s like score base design as well. But it's a great looking insert, you know. You get the nice McDonald's logo. Um, and I didn't see. I guess I could have looked up and see if there was a print run associated with it. But these these you know. Everything here is findable. It's just not as, uh, it's a little rarer is what I'm trying to tell you. And, and it goes for a few dollars more than like, basic 90s junk wax. Although, you know, with the pandemic, every all 90s junk wax is going for way too much, so. But uh, there you go. Those are the probably the four rarest cards I could think of in my collection at the moment th from the junk wax era. Anyways, um, Obviously, I've got, I don't think I actually have any Romany out one of ones <laughs> from the modern era, but, um, yeah, but, you know, like, you can, I've got tons of, like, parallel, like, low number parallels and stuff, too. Um, these are probably four of my favorite as well. Just, uh, you know, great, a great snapshot of what collecting was like back in the, like, late 80s, early 90s as well. And what, you know, what people were looking for for. Uh, alternatives to the, you know, the flagship sets that were, you know, produced in the millions. So if you guys have any favorite uh, uh, rarer cards or insert sets from the 90s uh, or in the or late 80s, let me know. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye.